Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this uh, short video I'm going to look at using the Epson P700, now this goes to the 900 as well, so it's the same from print point of view, for printing on fine art papers. Now, fine art is, and I've covered this elsewhere, is a rather generic term that doesn't actually mean anything. Um, typically, I take it to mean uh, matte papers, um, often rougher surface, uh, but you can get smooth papers as well. But um, it's a range of papers, um, and the art word appears in it mainly by means of marketing. Uh, but this particular one here is a Hanamula 210 gram, so relatively light, uh, watercolour paper. Now, I've got a box of this stuff. This has been around for a few years. It's quite a nice paper, lightly textured. And I'm going to print this image, uh, which is a view along a road in Oregon, one of the flat bits of Oregon. Uh, nice bit of sky on it. When you come to choosing papers, and I've looked at paper choices for printers like this, I tend to find that for art type papers, I'm more likely to use less strongly saturated uh, images because you don't get the vibrance and colour that you'll often get from uh, luster papers, baryta papers. It's all a matter of how you want the image to look. And different images suit different papers. But this one um, I would also use for black and white sometimes. But once again, that depends on the subject because you have inherently less contrast in this sort of paper. Now, this particular paper is the one I used recently for showing how to set up a custom media type on this type of printer, P700, P900. Now, when you put the uh, paper in, uh, it detects loaded paper and it comes up here and I've set, I've got a paper type of HANWC210. That's a custom paper type I've created for this paper. Now, you don't need it because when I created the profile for the ICC profile for this particular paper, I used the Epson USFA Ultra Smooth Fine Art paper setting. So you could use that media setting. But I happen to have, have on this particular printer, we have a media setting that's made for this particular paper. It doesn't make much difference in setting here, just makes it a bit simpler. If I was to use this paper a lot, I might well choose to have a custom media setting just for this reason. Anyway, here's the image. It's opened up in Photoshop. Now, I could just print this from Photoshop. And we'll just go to here. Is the Photoshop print dialog. Um, it's set uh, Photoshop manages color. I've set the printer profile to the correct profile for this. Um, and I would say all my profiles, if you look at the original written review for the printer, you'll see all the profiles I've created for this. And they're available on request for non-commercial use if you want to experiment with them. But you'll need to check the written review on the North Light Images site where they're listed to see which ones I've created. And remember, I'm in the UK, so if you've got a paper that's only available in the US, sorry, I don't have a profile for it. But, uh, as I say, they're, they're available if need be. Here it is, here's the image. Um, it's laid out on the paper. I've set a relative colorimetric for the rendering intent. Now, rendering intent, you may get a choice, and I'll show this in a moment on the Epson print software. You get a choice between uh, perceptual, usually, or relative colorimetric. Uh, the rendering intent is how the color management information is applied. Now, in this instance, relative colorimetric, the image looks slightly better. There's no guarantee with this. The only thing I would say is if you've got a box for black point compensation, uh, tick that. Now, this would go to if you were printing from Lightroom. I personally dislike Lightroom, never use it, but then I've used Photoshop for over 20 years, so I'm really comfortable with using Photoshop. Um, you're, you know, if you like Lightroom, then by all means use it, um, but uh, not here. Uh, but this is an old version of Photoshop, by the way, but I don't really want to do that one. So just for this, I'm going back to the... Uh, uh, the image here, and I'm going to use the Epson print layout software. Eventually, we're back here to this. Now, Epson print layout, the software has taken the image from, it's been passed to it from Photoshop. 
Here it is. In terms of uh, layout, I've set the media type here also for Hannah Miller WC210, which is the media type I created. Um, I've set the size for A3+. Plus. Paper source standard at the back here, quality standard. On papers like this, it doesn't always give you much of a benefit in printing at the highest quality setting. Um, certainly for this, standard is fine. Standard is what I profiled at, so that's okay. Uh, we've got uh, orientation it's set up. I've centered the image and I've scaled and I've set the margins to print it at about this aspect ratio on the paper. Now, if I was showing it, if I wasn't matting it or something, I might increase the bottom margin slightly. Sometimes if you're laying out prints, rather than having them truly symmetrical, if you lift the image slightly inside the, uh, uh, the piece of paper, it helps. But here I'm just printing it symmetrically anyway. Now, at the bottom here, where it's got color settings, I've got use ICC profile. Now, it's left to auto select. Now, normally I'd never use auto select. But remember that custom profile, custom media setting I made? Um, it's, when I made that, I included the profile in it. So here we go, it's automatically selected the WC210 profile. So if I hadn't got custom media, I'd have to use this drop down, go through, find the correct profile for the paper. But anyway, there it is. It's set, uh, everything's set up for doing that. And all I need to do is get the mouse pointer over here and press print. There we go, it's on its way. It's not a very fast laptop, so it's gonna take a little while just to sort the data out and get things moving, and we can just wait for the print. Printer wakes up, receiving data. Paper's loaded in, and uh, underway and nice thing about this printer is you can actually see what's happening at the top here and uh, yep there's an image being printed now it tells me it's going to be about five minutes printing uh, I can actually look at the image here it will display it on the screen so it's quite nice like that you can check sort of as a double check that everything's working okay uh, go back to the normal display details here So see what this picture looks like when it comes out. But one of the things I've found is that paper choice is really critical if you get your picture looking the way you want. Um, it, it, some pictures it may be more obvious than others. Some you might think, well, I don't know, shall I do this on a luster paper? Shall I do it on an art paper? Um, my Tendency is for black and white, I like stuff um, on softer papers like this, unless it's a very high contrast subject, in which case I'll look at a brighter style paper. Uh, for an image like this, yeah, I, it would look fine either way. Um, I've got some pale sunset beach pictures with mist and things like that, where the light paper and the low contrast really suits the image. Other colour images look simply awful when printed on this. You just don't know. I would say test things. Um, you can, if you've got large paper like this, cut it into small bits or do multiple prints. Do some test prints to see what things come out like. Certainly it's coming out okay here. It's got the right colour. It's got a nice deep sky I remember from the day. And it's got the burnt out look of the wheat fields. Now, these fields uh, have been cut and it's dry. This is in early autumn in, um, in Oregon and uh, it's probably not rained here much for quite a while. Um, it's just, you know, to me, it's typical of the more empty, the, um, the empty parts of Oregon, um, which are worth passing through. Um, well, print's nearly done. And it does look rather nice. So there's the print. There's nothing I can see obviously wrong with it. It's printed out, it's printed out level. There's no um, skew on it or anything like that. Um, it's every bit how I expected it to look. Um, the two look very similar. 
Now, I've always said you can't directly compare monitors and uh, papers and prints and screen, and screen comparison. It's, it's a bit of a, a, a lottery as to how much the screen will appear to match your print. But remember, the print is always the final result. And in looking at this, this has captured pretty much all of the image in the way I wanted to show it. Um, so there you have it, um, a fine art print. Um, as I say, I leave, leave to others to define just what fine art actually means, but um, on a nice watercolor paper. Uh, and it is a, it's a very nice paper. It's a, another example on a thicker paper, uh, another relatively low contrast image um, that's printed on this. And, it works works very well with stuff like that but hopefully that's helpful i've got lots more videos and written articles about printing on the p700 900 looking at different types of paper and if you're interested in selling prints i've got lots of videos looking at the business side of selling prints and other stuff like that so uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful and uh, thank you very much